This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to today's edition of The Pit Stop. It is no longer The Sim Racing News. You see the title? I gotta learn my left right. You see the title? This isn't a news show anymore. We're done with that. No, I don't know. I'm sure the chain name will come back. Anyway, I want to take it down a notch. I have been given a lot of thought to this show and what we do, and, and news is not what this show is. Uh, this show is talking about sim racing. It's hanging out with my friends, people who love sim racing as much as I do, and talking about various stories in sim racing. So that's why maybe we'll transition and change a lot of things about the pit stop. Uh, it's going to stay rooted in what we do. Uh, there won't be big changes in that respect. But we're going to have more fun. We're going to try to embrace as much interaction in this show as we possibly can. And um, again, it is not a news show. I do talk about news. I do talk about what's going on. So before I even get to the topics, I received an email, and I'm not going to name names in this topic, and it's something that I've been running through my head debating, uh, maybe even aggravated about. So eSport. Let's talk eSport. I watched the Indy race this, this weekend. Uh, I had a friend text me telling me, oh, NASCAR race is on. I didn't drop everything. Go watch that one. Um, Esport. So right now, there is a huge decline in news, obviously, with everything going on in the world. There's a huge decline in news if you look at it from the perspective of, well, let's start with hardware companies. Um, there's very little going on in the hardware world. Uh, most of these companies are probably not working hard. Uh, although I would think their sales are through the roof, so they are, but maybe they're overwhelmed with orders and not making updates that would be newsworthy. Um, so not a lot out of the hardware guys. Software guys, well, what we're hearing out of the software guys is eSport, 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 pro race, pro race, pro race, pro race, pro race. I think most of the companies right now are, are spending most of their resources catering to these events, to these th this huge growth, by the way. As I, uh, again, I don't want to come off as a, uh, I was going to name a name. I don't want to come off as a pessimist. This is not my point. This is not what I'm getting at. Um, but not a lot of news from a lot of the sim companies right now if you were to remove eSport from the story. So now from my perspective, hanging out with my friends. Is it important that we spend a lot of time talking about this topic? Um, if nine out of our 10 stories today are going to be eSport, is that something that we need to start going through? Like when I, I, I hear there's a new monster truck game and we just, hey, that's cool, awesome, remember the old one? And we move right along? Or... Is it something that we should minimize talking about at all? Or is it something that we need to push to the front as the biggest deal, the biggest news story, the biggest topic that we want to talk about? Now, in today's case, there is a little side story uh, to the news. Or there could be even two side stories to the news. Um, because things do happen as a result of the eSport. Um, it is having an effect on real-life racing, whether the drivers want it to or not. Uh, if you were to go to the McLaren page, for example, I didn't bring up any of the stories directly related to Lando Norris, but if you were to go to McLaren right now, racing, their number one story is Lando, 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 Lando. Um, so right now we do have a changing of the guard in terms of publicity, promotion, popularity, um, and that could affect when we get back to normal, some of the who's who in the world of motorsport. Um, it, it, I mentioned this and the impact this is having on the world and people, and I feel so bad for seniors in high school um, who are trying to transition to college in a, in a sport, uh, well, in anything, in the academics as well. Uh, if you're coming out of college and... and yeah, but see, <laughs> connections strikes hits us all equally. Um, Dave Blair loves hearing about what's inside with our guys versus their guys. I'm with you all the way, Dave Blair. Um, but but uh, where was I? Where was I? 
any. Uh, if you're a, coming out of college right now, this could be impacting your pro career. If you're an Olympian, maybe you're at your peak and a year from now isn't ideal. Uh, Boo-hoo, right? First world problems. Uh, it, while, but I'm just saying these are people that, that behind the scenes you have to feel a little bit bad for. And then I think about like people that we know. Well, how is this going to affect Igor Fraga? You know, the guy is on the brink of a real racing career. But now that just got all put on hold. Um, what about guys like friends of mine, like Glenn McGee, who's on the brink of a real-life career that it just got put on hold? Um, so that's the other impact of what's going on right now in the world of racing. Part of it is self-inflicted. Part of it is due to the circumstances that we're faced with today. Um, so let's get on with the news and I didn't even want to call it the news. Let's go on with the topics that we want to talk about. And I want to hear from you guys. I really do. I want to hear from you guys. I'm done with that story. I want to hear more about this kind of story. Um, like I said at the beginning, this isn't a news show. This is a conversation show about sim racing with my friends who love sim racing as much as I do. Um, that's the direction that the pit stop specifically, not the sim pit, the pit stop three days a week, three days a week, Monday, Wednesday morning, Friday nights. Um, so yeah, let's get on with the topics of the day. I just started way down the list on the iRacing Twitter page. So if you think back, our last stream was Friday, or at least news was Friday. Um, <laughs> Anthony, yeah. Uh, this is one of the longer series that we've run, Anthony. Uh, I think that would be a great topic to bring up at the end of the season, uh, adding time. I definitely needed more time. Um... Adding enough time to where tires become a factor. Now, in that car, I'm wondering if you can't... I think you can go two full tanks on a set of tires without problem. Um, I am drinking Starbucks. Uh, Pike's Place? Pike's Peak? Pike? Uh, laser. What about the twit? What about Twitch PC screen? All right, all right. So I just started at the bottom, uh, going back in time. You don't see the news on Twitch. No, it locked up, didn't it? Oh, that's not cool. Uh, <laughs> Pike's Place. Um, yeah, what's up over here? Hold on. Oh, man, what is going on? There we go. Man, I am having so many freaking problems right now, you guys. I swear, it's like everything has gone crazy over here. Ah, thank you for the heads up on that. Sorry about that interruption, YouTube, but you know I care very much about our audience both on Twitch and youtube so all right so i like i was saying we scroll and you guys didn't miss anything we had just gotten to it i was just going back in time to friday the last time we were on the air with news and scrolling up it's just here's nascar dominating heat race earns william byron the bush pole for his afternoon's race at virtual bms updates um Oh, I'm a big Starbucks fan. I wish I could get spo sponsorship from them. Um, Bristol, uh, Joe Nemechek holds off Ryan Priest by .006 seconds. 
to claim heat race number two. Photo finish decide. He hears the photo finish between them. <laughs> yes, Colin. I sure did. I had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> but yes, indeed. I don't know, Digger. I know nothing about that. Maybe one of you out there d do. <laughs> we are a little snooty with our co coffee here. And actually, in California, to be honest with you, uh, the snooty of California frown upon Starbucks. So if you go to a local coffee brewing house, they'll have bumper stickers they sell saying, friends don't let friends drink Starbucks. Um, no, I have to go to the market and buy giant bags of it. <laughs> Tom, I make it here. Hey, Tim, how you doing? Is Are you trying to slam me, Tim? Is that sorry? I'm not sure. I might have misunderstood you there. But it's been a while, Tim. How you doing? Um... I need to go get more. I And then the other I have is Italian roast, which I just cannot, cannot stomach. Um, all right. So anyway, here is just NASCAR all over their page. Uh, this is the iRacing page. And Wood Brothers talking about it. You got to admit, iRacing sim is pretty slick. Um, NASCAR pulls up chair, grabs popcorn. Brandon Williams. Yeah, boy. Nice with the camera. William Byron takes the checkered on a computer. <laughs> Obviously, they're talking sim racing here. Uh, but yeah, William Byron went on to win. I got that right, I, this this show. Um, and here is his burnout from winning the big race. Um, now, there is a little more to this. So let me let me get through this. More congratulations to William Byron. Here's Timmy Hill. Talking about getting three for three on top three finishes. Uh, found himself bouncing off a lot of the competition, but still had a great time. Um, uh, Tom, we can make those arrangements. Is that, I, I need to get my, my P.O. box in order. That might be a little difficult to do right now. Um... You feel that you were let down hard and fast by the usual racing fraternity once this global... I agree, Norman. That's one of the things that I think about and talk about, too. It's like, well, this is going to turn off like a light switch. You know, look, oh, I'm so proud. Timmy Hill, I'm so proud. Bouncing off the a lot of competition, but still had a great time. Drinking his beer or his foam. Oh, that's milk. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you're not going to see this when it all comes to an end. Um... Well, what's going to happen, Jason? Actually, okay. So, so let me let me make sure we've gotten to the top. Here, here's the finishing order. Um, William Byron won the race with zero incidents. By the way, F1 drivers putting their rigs up for sale. <laughs> um, and here it is. William Byron talking about everything um so what's gonna happen to sim racing here's what's gonna happen to sim racing when all goes back to normal all of the pro nine out of ten of the pro guys guys like william byron will still sim race in the off season guys like william byron and a handful of these guys will still do the annual invitational race in i racing uh and various other sims and you'll see an increase in those kind of annual invitational events with a lot more pro drivers embracing it instead of mocking it is what you're going to see moving forward. The other thing you're going to see is all of the companies that have now been working with real life racing, going back to work, doing their sims, doing their products, but having better connections with their real life counterparts, which means hopefully cheaper or easier negotiations on licensing cars, tracks, series names, driver names, things like this. 
Um, it could mean better access to data and information. Maybe that's how maybe iRacing will now have an in to get those laser tra scan tracks that we want or a rescan of Long Beach. Um, what else will sim racing, what the other thing is when this is all over and goes back to normal, sim racing will have seen what, a, a 10, 20, 40% growth spurt. I don't know the real numbers, but somewhere between 10 and 40 would be my estimation. So we're going to see a, a nice pickup in sim racing. With that, all of our sim companies make more money. All of our sim companies ho hopefully can hire more people and keep producing better sims. That's my hope. That's the optimistic side of this. That is the benefit of what's going on. So even when this might all change like a light switch, um, like a light switch, you know, all these, these guys, you're not going to hear from them anymore. They're going to go away. They're going to forget all about us, hands down. However, all those benefits I just laid out will still be there no matter what. Can't be taken away. So that's how I feel about that. All right, here's the post from iRacing. William Byron takes E NASCAR iRacing Pro Invitational Series win at Bristol. Scott McLaughlin scored his first IndyCar iRacing Challenge win at Barber. This is the race that I actually turned on. You heard Bernie's going to buy iRacing. <laughs> um... So, uh, yeah, anyway, I watched this race. Sage Karam races at a, a, a slightly different level. So a friend of mine who's a huge IndyCar fan was getting excited. I said, well, watch Sage Karam. This is on, like, Friday before the race. I told him, I said, watch Sage Karam. He will be at a different level than anybody else. There are a few guys that can catch him, though. Um, and I, I'm going to finish. So I'll finish my story and then come back to this race and what I saw. Um, and I said, however... He's got a little bit of a problem with finishing. Uh, the guy is, doesn't know how to turn it down. He only knows 11 tenths. And the big question of the race will be, can he keep it together? Anyway, I didn't see the moment, but I know that he had an incident with a lapped car uh, with a significant enough lead that he didn't need to do it. Uh, hey, there he is, Troy. <laughs> Troy, did I not call it? Did I not call it? <laughs> Um, if you ever beat Sage Karam in a race, though, uh, sim or real life, you are fast. I will, I will give the guy 100% credit. One of the fastest drivers in the world. A uh, little bit of a control problem. Uh, anyway, uh, I watched this race. What I did, outside of a few incidents, outside of a few guys who probably shouldn't be on the grid, I'm not going to name names, the top 10... Top 15 even has gotten, those guys have gotten good. Uh, I don't know. Now, I know they're running a fixed setup. I watched the race and I thought, they're running a lot of wing. I think they put as much wing on that car as they could in an attempt to make it as drivable as they possibly could. Um, but yeah, it was really, really cool to see a lot of guys out there running fairly competently uh, and getting in a good train that resembled Indy car racing to an extent. Um, I believe that is the update to the car. I'm not. I haven't driven it yet, Jerry. I can't remember. Um, Mitchie could beat Sage. I'm sure Mitchie could, and Mitchie would finish more races than Sage. Um, yes, Robert Wickens. Uh, we talked about that last week. I didn't have a current photo today. If anybody has it, Robert Wickens did run, um, and that's a very big deal. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the IR18 has the window screen. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. Like I said, this isn't news. This is, but I do say that I love doing this show because it does keep me informed on what's going on a lot more than if I didn't do this show. So I appreciate you guys being here to talk about it with me. Um, that's all I have on the iRacing NASCAR front. I don't have the Wiccan story here, but we did talk about it. Robert Wiccan's back running with that very cool modified wheel. Yeah, it, it was, um, uh, yeah, a very, I, all the controls in the wheel, so he didn't need to use his legs, and it was very, very awesome. Um, Sean should get a 350 million hand drive because <laughs> I like to use the wrong wheel. 
Uh, Norman, well, so there was a little of that that gone on. I have a story related to that, but it was fixed setup, so it made me kind of wonder. Um, I think Penske? I have that somewhere in here. I just don't know where it belongs. So this is the, yeah, see, I, yeah, I think he's kind of like working on, but, but he's out there racing is the best thing of all. Um, so also over the weekend, you had the R Factor to the race, right? And they had a bunch of different events. We are the race all-star series with intensive battles and legends trophy featuring the likes of Jensen Button and Rubens Barrichello, Mika Salo and more. See it all live. There's the link, link of link for you to follow and you'd be able to watch all-star four series i'm gonna all right so you got that going on um harry ticknell uh, Fittipaldi, Button, Montoya, Barrichello, Franchitti, Panis, Piro, Castroneves, Magnuson, Brabham, Canon, Fernandez, Pappas, Luizzi, Solo, Turner. I can never say his name. Priox. What's that? Priox. Montero. Um, that's what they did a little of. Uh, here's a cool picture. Check this out. Look at all the webcams. Look at all the web. This is what, when this all started, the eSport thing, and I talked about the growth of eSport, the growth of sim racing, all of these things. Um, and I talked about them really needing to get forward thinking with it. Look at this. You've got, look at all the guys in this race. You've got pros, uh, real life pros mixed with Sim racing pro. So Tiago Montero, uh, pro. Uh, Max Pappas, pro. Um, Joni Termala, sim racer. Kevin Siggy, sim racer. Billy Monger, speaking of Wiggins, Billy Monger. Um, anyway, look at this great list, of, and they all have cameras on them. I think that is just that. That is what I've been talking about. This is what we've been needing to take things to the next level and where we could actually be superior to real life racing. So we want to talk about uh, the end of petrol motorsport that someday could happen. I'm not talking about with today's Sims. I'm not talking about with today's bandwidth. But at some point in time, the writing is on the wall that gas burning motorsport will come to an end. I think that's a safe thing. It's just a matter of how long, right? Um, will it be Formula E? Will it be hovercrafts and, and Skywalker kind of stuff? Or will it be Ready Player One? And if it's Ready Player One, how are we absorbing it as the fans? And I think it looks a lot more like this. Uh, race feed. My ability to click on 20... How many cameras do they have there? 25 different cameras. I don't know if you have the ability to click, but I'm thinking futuristic. I want to be able to click on these. Uh, look at Montoya getting dropped <laughs> by his daughter. <laughs> this guy's on the Brabham's on the phone. Pod racers, yes, yes. Amir, I really like, I respect this format a lot, by the way. Uh, I really respect that they went and got some incredibly good sim racers and mix them with a bunch of real life and and look at the diversity of this group of drivers by the way they come from a wide spectrum of motorsport it's not just one series this is a really cool series um we all have our favorite sims in fact we are gearing up for sim pizza 2020 i need to i need to expedite that i need to pay for that place that i did the poll and we need to put a new pole, and we need to make a new pizza. Um, Tom Jones, glad we can help you through your day. I didn't see that, was he? Montoya. 
No, that's a steering wheel. He's got a steering wheel right there. Oh, that's Johnny Adam. Where's Montoya? Montoya. Oh, we can't tell. Oh, if he's racing right now, he might be. Nah, that would be crazy. That'd be crazy. One Mel Correa. Was he uh, with the Billy Monger? <laughs> John, sim racers in their box rooms, pros in their mansions. Tom Jones. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Chris. All right. Right here. Was he in the crash with Billy Monger? Is that what you're saying, or a different one? A different one. Okay. Right here. Sim racing is an interesting opportunity, isn't it? Um, big fight on the opening lap of the trophy race. Magnuson versus Frankiti. Oh, it's so slick the way there. Oh, overdrove it. Oh, I see why. A little touchy-touchy. Uh, Magnuson makes a break on the wild first lap and wins a mayhem-packed race legends trophy opener. Um, big win. Here he is coming to the line. <laughs> Joe. Jerry, I am so sorry to hear that. I am, man, I really feel for you. I really do, buddy. It's like, you know, you're taking a big leap when you go out and do that. You, you're you dependent on the best of conditions, and this is just so brutal. So sorry, buddy. And that hits close to home, man. Yeah, I think in that, Jason, when I was talking about when the lights go off or when this gets switched off like a light switch, what is the benefit for sim racing? Well, I think that there's some technology that we're going to gain from doing this. Um, I think that there's some ideas that, that the pro producers brought to our normal broadcast teams for them to learn from and vice versa. Um, anyway, yes. Uh, takes uh, Neil Johnny takes uh, Yanni. Neil Yanni takes the pole for the Heat Race Cup. Here's another. There he is. That's Correa. Wow. Yes, Jason. That's awesome. Gotta love sim racing, you guys. Gotta love it. Oh, uh, let's see. Time for great getaway. Bono Hui. Bono Hui over Jet Planner. There you go. Uh, big drama in the reverse grid. Legends trophy race. Check out the amazing opening lap. That's always fun. Is 
Oh, geez. It's crazy late on the brakes. All right, you guys can go check this out. We'll be here all day. Uh, Baricello wins the race in the end, and then Kevin Siggy wins the final All-Star Cup race, and we'll play a little of this, and then we'll move along. I'm going to bring that up, Marco. Oh. All right, Kevin Siggy. There you go. Okay, uh, Marco brought this up. This is how serious NASCAR is taking things, though. You can actually buy this at the Fanatic uh, NASCAR shop. You can actually buy T-shirts for the Pro Invitational Race. That's cool. And then they got this one. That's cool. Thank you. All right, what else to talk about? Um, yeah, this is what I really, really wanted to see come of this. I'm really glad they pulled this off with the webcams. It seems almost like it was a requirement. Um which is something that I've always kind of wondered. Now, bandwidth obviously is difficult. Um, this is what I'd like to see sim racers embrace. This is something I've wanted to see from the NASCAR Peak Antifreeze series, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, can you set up a P.O. box by the internet on the internet, or do you have to go in? All right, all right, let's move along. We'll never get done. Ever want to create create your own club or set up a multiplayer lobby for broadcasts? You've got guides on both here. You've got the clubs and lobbies and little uh, uh, how-to guides from Dirt Rally. So join in creating and managing Dirt Rally 2.0 clubs. This, I'm at their Twitter page, and same thing for lobbies. Whoops, if you want to go figure out. How to spectate features for broadcasting. Anyway, all their new uh, features that they added to Dirt Rally 2.0. You can go check that out. Uh, what else? Here's tonight's F1 eSport exhibition grid. So they can't do their... You know, this is the only one... This is the only eSport that is being affected in a negative way, <laughs> if you think about it. Uh, all of the eSport, for the most part, are done on the internet. So you think about all the NASCAR and iRacing, all the iRacing series are all done on the internet. Uh, most of our eSport competitions are done on the internet nowadays, with exception to F1 2019. They were always in person, they'd travel, they'd go do them in various locations and bring all the contestants there We've seen it. It's one of the things that makes it really special. GT Sport, same thing. Uh, you're not going to see the GT Sport uh, uh, competitions going on like they had. So anyway, um, this is the lineup of their pro exhibition race since they really can't do what they want to do. Uh, here's an onboard with Brendan Lay. No. Thought that. Oh, just a shot. And qualifying times, provisional poll. Um, Lando's a nut. He's great. Uh, anyway, all right. So, yeah, they had theirs. I'm looking for the results one. 
like I said, is this is this where we're at? Is this what we're supposed to talk about every day right now? Oh yeah, Charles Leclerc won, right? Uh, Brendan Rage quit. Oh, I don't have the Leclerc one. Why is my thing default to mute? Actually, don't answer that. I want it to default to mute. I didn't get to watch the F1 race, but I did watch about half of the IndyCar race, and I was actually very impressed after a few initial incidents with the, the way the pack drove. Uh... Leclerc. I say his name very wrong. Okay. Um, yeah. A uh, free trial still available for Grid F1 2019 Dirt Rally Xbox One PS4. Uh, NASCAR. We had some drama. Drama at the front. NASCAR heat. Contact between the Black Flag Matter and Eric Estep. That any relation to our dubstep? I don't think. We already. Okay. So there you go. That was their black flag drama. Um, they're giving away a copy. Wild last lap. Oh, here it is from here. Whoa! Whoa! Uh-huh. Yes, I think they did. <laughs> okay. All right, what else? What else, Grant? Oh, Igor Fraga, like I said. I guess he's back. World record of the last Nations Cup combo. Hope you enjoy the lap. 204-670 at... Which freeway track is this? Expressway? <clears throat> That's huge. That's huge. Didn't they have like 900,000 for the NASCAR one, I believe? Oh, no, that was regular TV ratings, not internet. All right, Igor Fraga, you can check him out there. WRC, the official game. We have the pleasure to present the new team section of the eSport WRC website. Our first featured team is none other than Race Clutch. That's the team that dominates their uh, tournaments, their big things going on. Team profile, so that page, and then you can follow the link. Here's the team profile for Race Clutch, that eSport team that has done very well, won a lot of money with, see, uh, let's see, Nexel, this guy. Isn't that like the grand champion right there? Um, hold on one second. I just got an email talking about our audio. How's the audio for you guys? Just uh, audio, quick audio check. Oh, the videos playing are very low. Yes, yes. I do that to not blow out your ears. Um, actually, where's my Windows audio? Oh, you guys haven't been hearing the video. <laughs> no, thank you, Thawman. No, it's, it's the videos. Uh, watch your ears, because hold on. This is what he's talking about. That's how this was supposed to go. If we don't play the uh, video, the audio, we won't get in trouble. Because um, it's an Indian surname. So there you go. That's why it's Johnny, not 
not Yani. Uh, this circuit, a lot of you asking, is NOLA, uh, N-O-L-A, which stands for New Orleans, Louisiana. That's what you guys were supposed to be hearing all show long. Thank you, Thawman. Thank you so much. That's why I pay attention to my email and messages I get during the show. All right, so a few things out of Risa regarding AMS2. Uh, you just thought... <laughs> yeah, it would make sense. Um, oh, thank you, Amir. My awesome voice. I have a voice for newsprint. <laughs> That's my joke. The joke is for, you know, you have a face for radio. And I'm like, yeah, I have a face for radio. And then I got to radio and they're like, you know, you have a voice for newsprint. <laughs> Anyway, uh, a few different things from AMS2. Number one, having trouble setting up your force feedback? Make sure to check out this overview on the available settings. So via Steam, there's a whole force feedback overview and recommendations, gain, profile, low force boost, FX, things like that. Recommended settings for a DD1, for example. Um, so if you're getting bad results out of your force feedback, you should check that out before you throw in the towel. Um, yeah, we're not getting those kind of rate ratings here, Norman. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Some users have also commented they solved their pedal calibration issues by doing it twice in a row. The second gave the full 1 to 100 range that you should get. Worth giving a try to. So, obviously, there have been a few little problems, but again, we are still early access on what is now becoming sort of a late or delayed sim to an extent. I've heard that said by others. I'm not trying to make that statement. All right, what else? What else today? Rick Motak, Philip Denes, Deans? We're back-to-back -back winners. Round two of the Road to Indy Rick Motak E-Series went smoothly as we extended our points lead by heading into round three. Looking forward to more racing. So congratulations to Philip Dine, Dini's. <laughs> Sorry. I have to disclaim what shouldn't be that hard of a word. Um, Rodney, I remember some new sim racing girl I did see. Um, Jason, did that solve it for you? <clears throat> no one can ever be better than Jessica. Uh, that's the beauty of being first. Um, it doesn't matter. Someone could be better, but you wouldn't be better because you weren't first. <laughs> like, can anyone ever be a better astronaut than Neil Armstrong? Well, tell me. I don't think it's possible. Okay, what else? What else? When's round three? I'm not sure when round three is. No, but he, you can't you, you can't be better. Jerry, yes, Jerry, I've heard that said many, many times. Lean <coughs> Ad, oh my. Oh, Chuck Yeager, I don't think Chuck Yeager was an astronaut. I don't think he ever made the leap. He was a uh, Air Force pilot. Um, no, but see, I see that's the thing. I, I can anyone be a better explorer than Columbus? I don't. You know, it's 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 like. Will anyone ever be better than Babe Ruth? Um, there are just things that you get when you do it first like that. Chuck was one of the greatest pilots of all time. Oh, yeah, you can't take anything away from Chuck Yeager. Chuck Yeager was the first man to break the speed of sound, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't he? Um... No, well, I, I, but that's different. That's being a pilot versus an astronaut. Uh, 
See, I'm all over this. Oh, now we're getting into my world. No, I love I love uh, space and air flight and um. Now I could argue that I could argue that easily, uh, Leonad. As far as exploration, granted, but don't we have men on a satellite constantly rotating the Earth, doing millions and millions and billions of miles? The Red Baron was the best pilot. The Red Baron was the best strategist. Strategery. I knew someone was going to argue the Columbus one. I knew it. I knew it. I just knew you guys would argue that. <laughs> Chuck was the first man to break wind. <laughs> uh. Oh, okay. So they don't, they're not far enough out to qualify. I, I, I obviously. All right. So here's a video here. You guys keep up the chatter. I'll good. play the video. Oh, is it too loud? Now we're too loud, right? Hi guys, Andre. We're back again with the simulator build in my house. And um, we'll get amongst it, fit all the stuff, lots of nuts and bolts. I've had to do a bit of drilling to the brackets, all sorts of stuff to make it fit, but really excited to get it together. This is Kelly Racing. Uh, I thought I was doing a wood rig. Wait, 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 wait. What's this in the background? Is that his sponsor? Whiskey? He has a whiskey sponsor? Yeah, but I thought we had a, a wood one. Hold on. I screwed up, I think. Whoa, hey, hey, hey. Hold on. Man, I thought he had a wood rig one. All right, never mind. I screwed up. Forget me. Forgive me. Okay. Um, this was just a bunch of stories here. I just didn't pull them all up. So Chadwick debuts in the not the GP format. How did she do? Did she do it? Anybody know how Jamie did in that one? Jamie Chadwick. Um, watch the live event. Norris triumphs in latest Veloce, not the GP event. Leclerc. Leclerc dominates virtual GP. We already talked about that. Red Bull driver wins F1 Pro exhibition race. Frederick Rasmussen won the Formula One eSport Pro exhibition race. I guess I missed that when we were uh, going through that. She fell out of the first race. Steve Austin was the greatest test pilot. There you go, Jerry Watson. Yeah, Tom, a lot of us seem to know a bit about our, our uh, air world, huh? All right, so negative. There is some potential negative impact. This was the big story behind uh, behind when we were doing the pregame show for the pit stop over there on on Twitch. Uh, the big story was this: Bubba Wallace just lost his real life sponsor because he quit an e race after getting intentionally wrecked three times in eighteen laps. We have officially lost the plot. Um, so this video, Bubba Wallace. So this is posted by Austin Oganowski. Come on, Clint! Oh. God! He's still down there. Still there. Yep, he just came up and wrecked the hell out of you again right. on purpose. Y'all have a good one. That's it. That's why I don't take this shit serious. Sorry, I was trying to talk to you there. Love the way he just he stopped out. on the back stretch. By the way. Just right there in the middle of everything. Anyway, uh, so here is a post here. Gentlemen, start your engines. Watch Blue Emu, spo Blue Emu sponsored Bubba Wallace and Landon Castle on the virtual bank, blah, blah, blah. Then the next post. Uh, I'm dying at my mentions right now. I ruined so many people's day by quitting a video game. Baja, a video game. Damn quarantine. Life is rough. And then Blue Emu replying to Bubba Wallace. You're fired. Um... <laughs> 
Anyway, apparently, yeah, he owes some 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 push-ups for sure. He might want to start doing a lot of them for charity. Um Yeah, I think a lot of people who are in the sim world have have an appeal or interest in flight as well, uh for sure. One of the reasons this show truth be told, one of the reasons this show is called The Sim Pit is that I purposely did not want something that forced it to be sim racing only. I wanted it to leave the door open for flight sims and things. I just didn't realize how much time it would take to do this alone uh, would take. There was no time to do flight sims or anything else. So, uh, But that was always the intention. Uh, it'd be kind of cool to get somebody who was really into flight sim who wanted to be like a cast member and, and take on the torch for doing the flight side because uh, it was always on my mind. I, I have a, I really love flight sims and that world as well. I'd love to bring DCS on the show and talk about the best mods and, you know, things like that. So, uh, Operation Sports, talking about... And so, let's get back to Bubba Wallace. Now, I don't know if this is fact or fiction. I, I did see it. Hey, Elvis, how'd your event go? Sorry I couldn't make it this weekend. Tell your mom I owe her a, a response email, but truth be told, I tore my whole studio apart this weekend and had to put it back together again. So I really didn't even pick up the phone or anything uh, this weekend. But um, I, I, I will respond to her email as well. Oh, shoot. That reminds me. I owe an email. Oh, I'm sorry, Bill. Uh, Fletcher. Shit. Oh, push-ups. Oh, okay, push-ups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> all right, all right. So, is it fair for Bubba Wallace? Um... Is it fair for Bubba Wallace to be fired? I'm slipping? What do you mean? Um, so, is it fair for Bubba Wallace to be fired over his actions in a sim race? Now, keep in mind the sim race is being televised to the entire world. Um... Now, I believe when you sign a pro contract for sponsorship, one of the clauses, he's a NASCAR driver, uh, one of the clauses in a pro race car contract talks about representing the, the company in a certain manner. And if you do something that they don't feel represents the company well, you can be fired for it. Uh, Tom Jones, is that... So, yeah, that's relevant. So, was Blue Emu looking for an excuse to end a contract? Was this... Hey, John Hill, I believe... This is the only one I know of, and I don't even know that this is official. I don't know... This seems like an odd reply from a company. Like, is this where we've become? Is this what we've become? Is this really what we've become, people? That we... We hire and fire by tweet. We 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 meme Donald Trump saying you're fired to fire somebody. Um, now, <clears throat> let's just say that I am sponsored by Starbucks and I'm a pro. And I decide that I'm going to go rent a ski boat to pull all my friends, and we're going to go to the lake and do that. And let's say that I get really, really drunk, and we're out there making a mess, and the cops arrest me and throw me in jail for DUI, endangering, um, and it's this whole thing. Um, I could be fired for that. For the same reason, I think that Bubba Wallace maybe was fired. Um, 
It's what he said, Devin. Um, Billy says, Bubba should know his sponsor better and what they expect for from him. You're absolutely right. Uh, i give you an example. If you were sponsored by Rockstar Energy Drink and you had another driver sponsored by Chick-fil-A, I think it's pretty safe, anybody who knows these companies' backgrounds, I think it's pretty safe to say that they would have different types of expectations for how you represent yourself, the company, in public. Um, <laughs> oh, Let's play that again, though. Come on, Clint! Oh. God! He's still down there. Still there. Yep, he just came up and wrecked the hell out of you again right. on purpose. Y'all have a good one. Back block for us, Tyler. That's it. That's why I don't take this shit serious. Sorry, Tyler. I was trying to talk to you there. Peace out! <laughs> woot woot have a good one woot anyway all right i don't know i you know it's a funny thing you sign a pro contract and to an extent you're signing away certain freedoms um you know uh like <laughs> bad joke no i'm not gonna do a bad joke uh i was gonna say something very dark um, if you're a pro driver, like, like it, I'm a guessing that if you're a formula one driver, that there are clauses in your contract that say you can't skydive, for example, um, you know, you're, you're their asset at that point in time. Uh, it's a tough call though. That, that would, I'll tell you this, that's a sucky way to lose your ride. And on the flip side, I totally understand where they're coming from. Um, he should have pulled into the pits and, and quit. He shouldn't have just turned it into the spectacle that it was, apparently. Um, <laughs> yeah, I... There, Durquist says that Clint was terrible in every race. And and that's the other thing. Uh, there you go. Billy says he lost the sponsor because Bubba acted like he didn't care about it, which the sponsor made it feel like the sponsor didn't matter. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> if if he said I didn't take my job seriously and got fired for it, he'd get fired all the time. Something like that. You know, when NASCAR is trying to keep their fans happy, when the NASCAR is going out of their way to make an impression with fans... Um, you need to take it seriously. You know, the reason they're doing this is to maintain a certain limelight instead of their fan base learning to love something different while they can't have racing. This is hoping that they'll still be there when they do flip that switch and go back to racing and forget about sim racing. Um, so to have one of the contestants in that diminish what they're attempting to do, that's a big deal. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if NASCAR had some words as well. Um, and again, it gets back to what what Billy is saying also. It also could come back to the type of company and, and y y you got to know the type of company you work f for and what they find acceptable or not i mean i'll give you an example just from a race team perspective if you're a mechanic on a team let's face it there are different standards 
when you're working for one team versus another versus another. Um, and certain teams have certain reputations and with it might come winning, maybe. With it might come harder or longer hours or a certain conduct, um, certain dress code. And then, you know, uh, not to name names, but I mean, I have a friend who works for Penske and I have a friend who worked for Panther Racing. And uh, like, you know, one was like wear shorts and jeans and who gives a F. And the other was, here are your khakis, here's your chart for what you wear at what moment, um, and don't fall out of line. So, and that's just at the mechanic level. <clears throat> yep, yep, yep. Here's the other thing. You're a driver. You know, if you're Lewis Hamilton, it's one thing. But if you're not, there are thousands of guys waiting to fill your shoes. There is no shortage of great drivers in this world. There is no shortage of guys that they can replace for cheaper money, especially if you're not at a, a top, top Lewis Hamilton level. So, all right. Well, and this is part of, you know, when I was talking about them forgetting about sim racing going to their pros, this was the downside, and I'm not saying that our guys don't crash, but our guys, certainly every last one of them, take it extremely seriously. So when this makes them, to sim racers, we can all be offended. Um, you know, how dare he? Yeah, exactly. This isn't just a pickup race. Yep, yep, yep. Um... Yeah, and, and it's, it's, yeah, okay. <laughs> Drag, the sci-fi racing game, coming later this year to Steam. Trailer, screenshots, and details. Here's a little trailer of Drag, early access. Is it a drag? Is that true, Joe? I wouldn't be surprised. I, I literally would not be surprised. Like, if you want to work with him, that's part of the baggage that goes with it, right? That looks like an RC. Alright, their sound isn't worthy of listening to. That song was not worth demonetizing the show. What's sci-fi about it? Just that the cars are like almost kind of futuristic-y? <laughs> they look cool, though. I'll give them that. Yep, yep. A hundred percent, Billy. And that is a huge difference. And when they bring these pros in... Obviously, they don't realize the way this series and sponsors are looking at it in some cases. You know, if you're going to say yes, you better take it seriously. Especially if they're putting it on TV. If it's just behind the scenes in the name of fun, who cares? Ah, uh, there's our futuristic. Oh, ow! All right, there's drag coming this year. <clears throat> I have not tried the 919 Evo in Assetto Corsa. Uh, all right. HTC now selling Vive Cosmos Elite headset for only $549, and that includes Half-Life. Um, I will say that Half-Life is one of my favorite games. I haven't played it. I, this weekend I was going to play, but I tore the studio apart instead. Wreckfest buggy. <laughs> anyway, uh, are those pass-through pass cameras on the Vive Cosmos? Like, can I see out of my mask? That is something that I wanted from VR. Anybody know? How's the resolution on that? That's not a bad price. Ah, so this is a question. I haven't read the article. I don't know. Stuff. 
.co.nz. Come on. Thank you, New Zealand. Ever wonder what car has been in the most video games? I've been calling things sluts, whether it be a car or a track or whatever. The, the latest slut in sim racing being the Porsche Cayman, right? Um, so what is the biggest slut in sim racing? I don't even know if they gave us the answer properly. Half the time you get a headline, they don't even give you the answer. Um... Finding determining many of those no bunch of Whoa Okay, so that it's a long list. Hold on. Fifth on the list. Okay, hold on. Oh, I should have read. Number one status is the most common on virtual roads. The data breakdown also cites Ford as the car brand appearing in the most video games, followed by Chevrolet and Toyota. However, the shocker is what takes number one status as the most common car to be seen on virtual roads. As much as video games offer a chance to escape to virtual reality where anything is possible, from chasing down bad guys to racing around the world... Famous Formula One tracks of all the cars featured in video games. It's the Volkswagen Beagle Beetle that you're set to see the most. Really? Really? I'm shocked. Sixties Camaro Mark One is the second. American Camaro, the Camaro, Chevy Camaro, Sixties Camaro is second. The, uh, I'm not gonna. All right, I'm done. I don't believe them. I think they're wrong. Uh, Connor Daly thinks his iRacing Indy car handles like a Mazda Miata. Like what the heck is going on? This co it feels like I'm driving on a wet track. Welcome to iRacing. Like, there ha never once in real life have I ever had rotation that early into a hairpin at Barber. Like, are you kidding me? This isn't a Mazda Miata. This is an Indy car. Like, we have so much downforce. Are you kidding me? This is the dumbest <laughs> thing ever. I hate sim racing so much. Oh. <laughs> These are all my Aust I I didn't even have to look. Yep, yep. Austin Alganoski. All right, here we go again. Ready? So the next couple questions on iRacing, I should preface. So speaking with someone at IndyCar today and was told that uh, the next time a driver wants to say something critical of iRacing or say that it, it isn't feeling exactly like an IndyCar, uh, please let us know first. Uh, because apparently some folks there didn't like Scott Dixon's comments about, hey, it's not real and uh, I'm not really being able to jive with it. <laughs> no, it ain't all roses out there, people. Um, you know what they probably sh <laughs> with so many guys not coming from sim racing backgrounds, maybe they would have been better off taking them out of their normal disciplines so that they didn't make those direct comparisons. I mean, the one thing that I've been saying more recently is these are not real cars, these are not real tracks, and stop trying to make that argument. But the racing is very real. real. Um, we're modeling cars in the name of or in the direction of certain types of real-life counterparts. We are modeling the tracks, because even the tracks... Yeah, yeah, Billy, it's so true. Stop trying to make this one-to-one -one comparison um and 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 just because we stop making that argument doesn't mean that teams won't still gravitate it to it for training we're still striving for as much realism and 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 parallel as we can get but when you take guys who don't do it who might not embrace it and, and if i were to organize an event with a bunch of real life racers in my mind, I'd be thinking, okay, so what's my ratio of guys who are 
going to like not want to do this, like like despise that they're even being asked to do it. What percentage of my guys are just going to suck and talk about how unrealistic um, it is? And then how many of the guys are going to actually gravitate and embrace it and do well? And then how many guys actually already do it? You know, that is the ratio when I go draw from a bunch of real-life drivers. Um, but we're going to have a, a percentage of guys who mock it is going to be as large as the guys who currently do it. And then in the middle, you're going to have the guys who gravitate towards it or just trash it. I mean, and that's just a realistic um, breakdown of it. So uh, McLaughlin wins that race, uh, the virtual IndyCar event games from Australia. So as they got that Australian V8 supercar champion, that series going down there. Anyway, Scott McLaughlin got it done. Um, sim racing. And, and this right here, this this here is the point. Um, and Leclerc, Leclerc. Um, yeah. And here we go. Well, and this is the reason why. Sim racing may even may be even tougher than real life, says Leclerc after his first win. Uh, I agree. I think sim racing is considerably harder than real life racing. Um, and, and for a bunch of different reasons. Um, I think that one of the reasons, um, one of the main reasons I think that, that sim racing is more difficult is it's very hard to get an idea of the speed sensitivity. Tim, really? Uh, just if you're going to keep coming in and repeating that, it's the last time I'm going to address you on it, Tim. But really, you want to come in here and give me a hard time, buddy? Really? Um, seriously? Sim racing, maybe even tougher than real life, says Leclerc after his first win. So, I mean, that's the bottom line. The bottom line is without that speed sensitivity, without G-forces, without real feel of what the tires are doing underneath you, it is so hard to really get a feel for what the car is doing. And in real life, all of these things are glaringly obvious. These things are overwhelmingly obvious to you to the point that it ties into your inner ear, your intuition, your, your natural responses, your reflexes reflexes are all in involved um so yeah i i think and i think that that is what a lot of these pros are experiencing as they get into sim racing it's not an easy transition you have to treat it like being given you know these guys are coming into it i'm assuming thinking oh it's a nascar sim so i'm going to go from my nascar to this nascar and it's going to be one-to-one -one, or it's going to be easy because i'm a pro uh, same thing on the Formula One, doesn't matter. These guys need to think of it more like driving in the rain. Like, no, you're going to go drive go-karts on ice um, because we're making you do something different. It is sort of in the name of fun. It's in the name of an audience. It's in the name of marketing. So let's not worry about is it exactly what you did in your cup car last year. Um. So, anyway. Uh, oh, this is what we're talking about, the race. Real Penske engineers were the key to iRacing IndyCar victory. Dang it, my coffee is cold. That kills me. Penske, Penske IndyCar drivers Scott McLaughlin and Will Power have credited their real-life engineers for helping to mastermind a strong start to the IndyCar iRacing challenge. What I don't understand about that is that it was fixed setups, wasn't it? Um, anyway. Uh, their engineers are helping them behind the scenes. That's the other series, not the fixed setup that IndyCar did. Um, so, all right, yep, best strategy, and that's what it comes down to. Shoot, we've had some strategy battles recently. Um... MotoGP virtual race, record-breaking global esport event. The numbers and reach from the world first make an, for impressive reading. An incredible warm-up for round two with the likes of Mark Marquez, Respel, Repsol, Honda team, Fabio Cataro, Cartaro, Petronas Yamaha, SRT, and Maverick Vinales, Vinales, Monster Energy, Yamaha, Moto, lining up a blah, 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 blah. 
Um, I, I that was a different series, Troy. Uh, I think that was a different series than the IndyCar one. Um, <laughs> that looks like my intro. Hey, yeah, what are they doing? What are they doing to me? So anyway, they had a good event. Do we have numbers? 28 broadcast partners. Wow, that is crazy. Um, all right, AMS2, hot fix. Oh, now I have to pee. My coffee's cold and I have to pee. Crazy. AMS2, hot fix, 0.8, 0.0, 0 0.1 now available. Public early access build of Automobile has received its first update, version 0.8. Oh, one is now available to download. Heading out of the blocks in fine style with their initial early access offering. Much uh, general, so we have some general updates: rain spray parameters, camera world movement, UI updates, physics, AI, vehicles, tracks, and so on. So that's good news. Good, good to see. What else? GTR two, GTR two. What? GTR2 updated one click with the 10th anniversary patch. While we're all waiting for the new GTR3, we have thought of a good dive into the past to give a new legendary GTR2 the title of The Simbins released in 2000. What? The update. How old is this update? Why are they talking about it? I've given up hope for GTR3, by the way. I literally have just given up hope. I don't think it's ever going to happen. I, I'd love to be wrong on this one. Hit Mike, so you are the first, you're the second person to ask me my brand of coffee. I, I drink Starbucks. I'm not a big, I love Starbucks when I'm traveling because I know what I'm going to get when I'm going to, like, if I'm in a foreign city, uh, I go to Starbucks, I know what my, I'm going to get for my coffee uh, and what it's going to taste like. I buy Starbucks at the market because of the pre-ground coffees at the market. I, it seems to be the best that you can get. Um, but I am drinking Pike's Place Starbucks. Um, there is a coffee bean and tea leaf around the corner for me. And admittedly, they have better coffee. But they're a little more expensive. And when I do go to Starbucks, it's usually at 5 in the morning, like on my way to work. And um, uh, coffee bean and tea leaf isn't open yet. What biscuits? <laughs> I don't, very funny, Brian. Uh, or Glenn, sorry. Um, all right. DIY Three Degree of Freedom. The Sim Tools Motion Simulator. We're at Sim Race Hardware News and Reviews and Blogs, so I can't play the video, but you guys could probably find it if you want. If you want to see another do-it-yourself motion platform, you'll be able to find it through them. It runs on Arduino. Can you believe it? That's crazy. It's totally crazy. Um, see, Mike, I can't do espresso. The stronger ones just, like, I have some Italian roast in the freezer or in the cupboard, and it's just too strong for me. The Marbula 1 races? I don't think I've seen those, Roadhog. Biscotti biscuits. I like cookies. I will. I would love to try. I've had coffee sent to me before, by the way. It wouldn't be the first. Oh, wow. This means we're getting to the end of the show. It means I can take a pee break. Oh, oh, it's been a long show, huh? Uh, uh, that's where we're at. All right. Checking out some rigs here. Miss my... Scarner 6. Also made a sim rig this weekend use, using with VR. That looks like a Rickmo Tech RS1 type design. Junkyard seat. Got the Logitech wheel and pedals. Running in VR, we don't need to worry about um, um, excuse me, distance. Yeah, if I add enough milk, I can drink that coffee. <laughs> who's your tire fan right on um 
Budget rig. Here you go. Deathmobile. Look at this one. Awesome. That is literally like, I'm not going to buy any. I got all this in the garage. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was the name of that coffee? I thought about that recently. Uh, this one here is by TGO Blue 2. TGO Blue 2. Um, Death Wish Coffee? Never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, it was all racing related. Uh, the names. It was like Nitro Blend or, you know, uh, Checkered Flag or something like that. Um, <laughs> coffee is called Awake. There you go. Chocolate mocha with four shots of espresso and a dash of raspberry. Uh, that sounds pretty good. Um, that sounds really good. Yeah, look at this wood rig. I like this. Uh, a couple things to point out on this. I've seen this. I've never built one like this. Um, when I Look at his cuppy. He's got like an Alienware cuppy. So whenever I built a death mobile, it was using a junkyard seat of some kind, some kind of repurposed seat. In this case... This is another one of those locking a desk seat, which I kind of dig. Whenever I used a desk seat, I used like belts or something, blocks, belts, something, cups to hold the wheels so it wouldn't slide around on me. Um, I've seen more and more people incorporating this design, which is really genius if you have like a, a desk. If you're coming from a desktop and you don't have a jack junkyard seat, this is a design that you got to embrace. Uh, really well done. Really well done. Um, finally pulled the trigger on the SimLab stand. Side graded for from VR for more seat time. Cable management next. So, um, oh, it's the monitor stand. Yes, it's the monitor stand from SimLab. Gotcha, gotcha. There you go. Um, all right. And this one was posted by Blackboard. And then lastly... Last thing for the show today, just posted on the Simpit channel by Dem Booth was Simpit Road Series with Booth, GT1 Aston Martin at Road America Race 1. So if you want to see things from his perspective. I'm not that far behind. There's Devin. Nah, you'll be all right. Ooh, I like this new overlay. Oh, cool, cool. That's a cool overlay right focus. there. I was focused. I just didn't do the right thing. That was a mistake. Nice layout with your overlays, cameras, everything looking really good there. Um, Jack's Coffee. Thank you, Darren. Jack's Coffee House. Yeah, we got some race-inspired coffee. Didn't we have some moments in this race, Devin? It just the more offset they are, the weirder they're going to look. That's me in front of you. Cold tire bug. Oh, James. Oh. Oh. Anyway, if you'd like to see the GT1 race, oh, our GT1 race, such a fun series. Um, Randall, Randall White. Didn't you win yesterday? Sorry, I didn't. I should have had a graphic on that. Why do I not have results from our series right here, right now? Um, it's our very own in-house series. Dave Blair even mentioned I'd rather hear about us than all this eSport crap. Um, let's go ahead and pull that up, and then we'll bring this show to a close. Oh, i to call it an end of a day here, you guys. It's okay. I got a lot of stuff to move into. I have a... Just make sure your two side ones are the same size, if possible. All right, Simpit Road Racing there. Series. Here and we go, GT1 Championship. Our results at Silverstone from yesterday's race. And it was Randall White. Yep, Randall White won over Randall McGrew. David Grunnell finishing in third place. That's going to be a little bit of a mix-up in our points. Uh, Andrew Leach finished in fourth, and Anthony Murano Jr., Finishes in fifth. That was the way things go. And our points, this, uh, I still haven't added points for the pole sitter and leading laps, but Randall White has now pulled into the lead. David Grunnell now in second place with Joa Antonio firmly in third. Oh, she is 
Anthony Morano Jr. in fourth, and Andrew Leach in fifth place. If you'd like to join us, all you have to do is search the iRacing League section for the Simpit Road Racing Series. And uh, anyone, look, Ola, Ola, you're in. We got you in, Ola. You're good to go. Durquist, thank you very much. I never know. I never know if we're doing it right or wrong over here. So I'm just doing my best to make sure we make this show be for what it is, which is hanging out with our friends, talking sim racing. It's not so much a news show as much just conversation, talking, getting your guys' input and your thoughts on various different topics. I uh, thought we had a great discussion today about Bubba Wallace. Uh, I feel bad for Bubba Wallace. I, you know, I, no matter what you're getting, you say, uh, it's a, a lousy way to lose your job. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but, you know, that's part of life. And, and, and I don't think we need to cry too, too hard for, for most guys who've had any chance to be a pro, made a good living. Um, and I'm sure... Someone's going to pick him up. He's a talented driver, and he will learn his lesson. So anyway, um, I had fun today. I'm glad you guys had fun today. I got to bring this one to a close just because I got to run to the bathroom. Time to go to the bathroom, refill coffee, and we're going to stay live on Twitch. I'm not sure for how long. I've got several agendas. I'm still working on the studio. We did a full change. Uh, not so much that you'd notice here on our green screen show but you'll notice it when we do some driving. You'll notice it uh, on our Twitch streams. Things d definitely looking different. Just trying to set things up for um, the future and what we're filming here in the studio. Anyway, been a fun show. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of the pit crew and making it so much fun to talk about sim racing each and every day. This is the Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.